The proposal for the voice to Parliament has been scrutinised by a parliamentary committee looking to finalise the wording of the referendum question. Advocates explained why they want the voice enshrined forever in the Constitution, but concerns remain from some experts. Supporters and critics of the proposed Indigenous Voice to Parliament have been arguing for months, but now the official debate is underway. The authors of the Voice referendum question were among the first to appear before a parliamentary committee beginning a six-week-long analysis. The proposition that, you know, advice from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people will cause delays and threats is a very negative, a very negative view of us. We're not allowed to use the R word anymore. But if the R word, racist, is now banned for advocates, the I word is still being used by critics, like former Nationals leader Barnaby Joyce. If you do vote for it, you're an idiot. The Liberal Party wants to know if the architects of the proposed constitutional change have crossed their I's and dotted their T's when it comes to giving the voice the power to advise executive government. Do you think that you could achieve the objectives in the wording but reduce that risk by amending the wording so that a voice to the executive is done by the parliament? I don't have a view on that because I think it's... Can I say constitutional shadow boxing? But constitutional expert Greg Craven has warned that the ability of the voice to consult executive government would see decisions litigated to death by judicial activists. When you put the huge definition of executive government with the huge definition of scope, you really are in a position where the voice potentially may make almost any representation on almost any subject to almost any part of government. Uluru Dialogue co-chair Pat Anderson insists the process hasn't been rushed. She says constitutional rather than legislative recognition is needed because positive change has been pushed back with each change of government. A lot of money, you know better than me, is spent on us. doesn't get down to where the real needs are. That's why we need to talk to the, to the government of the day as well as the parliament. If we were to only legislate a, a representative body um, we know from the history of our struggle that a government will come along and silence it. Liberal Senate leader Simon Birmingham, who's at odds with his party's support for the No campaign, says he hopes the committee can bridge the political divide between the major parties. But I do hope and still hold out some faint hope whether we can still have a unifying national moment uh, around recognition of first Australians. Journalist Kerry O'Brien will co-author a handbook on the voice proposal. He also appeared before the committee on the opening day, offering an impassioned plea to voters. And when I hear people say, let's just do more of the same, only do it better, I say, for God's sake, wake up to yourselves. Joel Phillips, Sky News, Canberra.